Hello and welcome to Bun Med, where we discuss concise medical knowledge that you can fit inside of a bun. In this video, we're going to be having a look at the various clotting studies that we have available, including things like prothrombin time, uh, APTT and bleeding time, and really understanding what they mean and how we may apply them to various diseases. Whenever we order a pile of clotting studies, the, there are three main things that we're interested in and finding out. Firstly, what is the bleeding time? Secondly, what's the prothrombin time? And lastly, what is the APTT, or the activated partial thromboplastin time? If we have an issue with, uh, a, with our clotting, one of these times or multiple of these times is going to be raised because we're taking longer to clot. So firstly, bleeding time refers to any disease of primary hemostasis. And we know that primary hemostasis involves the von Willebrand factor and platelets. Thus, if we have a disease of von Willebrand factor or platelets, we're going to see an increased bleeding time. Prothrombin and activated uh, partial thromboplastin time measures the activity of secondary hemostasis. Prothrombin time or PT measures the activity of the extrinsic pathway, thus the activity of factors 3 and 7. So if you have a raised PT, it's because we have a def defect in the extrinsic pathway. The APTT measures the activity of the intrinsic pathway, and thus measures the activity of factors uh, 8, 9, 11, and 12. So now let's move on and have a look at some of the diseases and how these times are affected and what the clotting study is going to be. So let's start with the thrombocytopenia. Thrombo means platelets, cytopenia means lack of. What's the pathology here? Well, we're either missing platelets, so we have fewer platelets, or we have dysfunctional platelets. Pause the video and have a go at answering what, how we might see bleeding time, PT and APTT uh, is affected, and whether this is affecting primary or secondary hemostasis. Okay, so we know that platelets are involved in primary hemostasis, and because they're involved in primary hemostasis, our bleeding time is going to be high. However, we're not affecting the clotting cascade at any point, thus our PT and our APTT is going to be normal. Okay, let's now move on to von Willebrand's disease. And again, here we have a lack of von Willebrand in the blood or dysfunctional von Willebrand in the blood. Again, pause the video and have a go at uh, working out if this is primary uh, or secondary hemostasis and the rest of the clotting studies. So we know that, again, von Willebrand is involved in primary hemostasis and formation of that pl uh, platelet plug. It's the thing that initially binds on to that exposed collagen. Thus, our bleeding time is going to be high. Our PT is going to be normal because we're not affecting the clotting cascade. Now, it would make sense if the APTT of von Willebrand was also normal, because von Willebrand is involved in primary hemostasis. However, APTT in von Willebrand's disease tends to be raised. And the reason isn't anything to do with von Willebrand itself, it's to do with factor 8. And factor 8 actually travels in the blood, bound to von Willebrand. So thus, if we have a deficiency of von Willebrand, we also get a deficiency in factor 8. So von Willebrand's disease also gives you a raised APTT. Okay, now let's move on to haemophilias A, B, and C. In haemophilia A, we have a lack of factor 8. In B, we have a lack of factor 9. And in C, we have a lack of factor 11. So because it's affecting the clotting cascade, we have an issue with secondary hemostasis. Now, we know that factor 13 isn't in the uh, intrinsic or the extrinsic pathway, but both factors 8 and factor 9 is pa uh, part of the intrinsic pathway. So therefore, our bleeding time is going to be normal because it's affecting the secondary hemostasis. Our PT is going to be normal because we're not affecting factors 3 and 7 and our APTT is going to be raised. Okay, now let's move on to warfarin, an anticoagulant drug that we still use very, very liberally. In terms of warfarin, it acts on an enzyme known as vitamin K reductase, and it inhibits this enzyme. And thus, it inhibits factors 2, 7, 9, and 10. Again, pause the video and have a go at filling out this table. So we know that factors 2, 7, 9, and 10 are part of the clotting cascade, and therefore this is affecting secondary hemostasis. As such, our bleeding time is going to be normal. Now look, we are affecting factors 7, so therefore our PT is going to be raised. We are affecting factor 9, so therefore our APTT is also going to be raised. 
Now, I know what a lot of people are thinking. They're going, hang on, uh, we use INR, which is a derivative of PT, to monitor warfarin. So why is it that um, we don't completely use APTT at all? And the reason for this is that the factor 7 has the shortest half-life. So therefore, it gets broken down the quickest. So therefore, um, if we measure the PT and we use that to calculate the INL, we get the most fresh data available and the most accurate data available on the activity of warfarin. Lastly, let's have a look at this condition called disseminated intravascular coagulation. And again, this will be covered in the pathologies video. In disseminated intravascular coagulation, we have uncontrollable clots forming all over our body. So no one's controlling how many of these clots form. As such, in the process, it uses up all of our platelets, all of our von Willebrand factor, and all of our clotting factor. So we're deficient in everything. So pause the video now and have a go at this table again. So because our platelets and our von Willebrand factor is being used up, we're going to have an issue with primary hemostasis. And as well as that, because our clotting is used up, we're going to have an issue with secondary hemostasis, so it affects both. Since we have primary hemostasis being affected, we're going to have a raised bleeding time. And since the whole of our clotting cascade is affected, we're going to have a raised PT and a raised APTT as well. Now, as you can see, this leaves the body in a state where it's ready to bleed at all times. And patients often bleed randomly from sites such as uh, venipuncture sites and such as from the ears. Um, so therefore, this is a medical emergency and needs to be treated as soon as possible. That concludes the video. Hope you guys found it useful. Please feel free to share and subscribe. And if you have any comments, leave them below and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. See you in the next one.